Oh, hi, it's Rob, and I'm in the remote office uh, again today. I'm uh, going to do something a little bit different. Um, I received a package not too long ago. Uh, it is the Labist's Robot Kit for Raspberry Pi Model EC1. Now, I haven't seen very much online about this yet, and it turns out it's a relatively new product, so um, I figure what I'll do is I'll start with uh, an unboxing and kind of an assembly video. And we'll put it together, and then uh, maybe if we go from there, we'll go into the, you know, the actual connection to the Raspberry Pi and what you can do with it. But for now, let's get to it. So this is the box it came in. Uh, it is the Labist's Robot Kit for Raspberry Pi. And uh, I have taken off all the outer... Uh, plasticky brouhaha because you know what taking plastic off of a box looks like. Uh, this came, I don't know, about a week ago, I think. Uh, shooting this right around Thanksgiving time of 2021. And in here we have the user manual. Nice floppy bit of plastic. The cool little car cover. Some sort of a prehistoric tool. Uh, looks like a bag of tooly bits, some other bits and pieces, we'll go through these a little bit later. Uh, this looks like servos or actuators, not entirely sure yet. I believe this is the camera, I'm not entirely sure. And we have the main chassis of the robot. This actually comes with the motors installed already. Uh, I think I have seen some uh, some earlier videos on this where they weren't installed, but uh, and of course the four wheels. I believe that is all from the box. All right, a little more exploded view of what's in the box. Uh, I'm going to open up these bags one at a time. This is the camera. Uh, I think this is a 720p camera, if I remember right. A little USB plug on it, so it's uh, pretty much a general USB camera. This looks like it is the robot, the motor controller board. Uh, if this is, I think, the main driver board of the oh. bits and pieces. Yes, this is. Oh, look. There's a uh, little SD card um, USB device in here. I believe that this is the operating system uh, and the associated code with it. A set of standoffs and plastic bit and this is the motor driver board that attaches to the Raspberry Pi. That I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's a piece that's broken off. Well, that's not very nice. Came broken. Alright, I might have to see if I can repair that. I don't know if that's a uh, fatal flaw or not. This, I believe, is the ultrasonic detector and headlight module. And that's exactly what it looks like. So there is this nice ultrasonic detector. Uh, I've probably seen these before. And then a set of LEDs that are the headlights of the robot. Um, four pin header that I'm assuming goes to the four pins on here. It's got mounting hardware attached to it. The last bag. Move these out of the way. Now oh, here is some additional
plastic mounting bits. Uh, these these are apparently laser cut uh, from acrylic. Looks kind of cool. Kind of cool and spacey. Along with some additional mounting hardware and a neat little driver tool. All right, once we've determined that this is the front direction, we're going to put on the headlight and ultrasonic uh, sensor module. This, of course, goes facing this way. And it is assembled using these screws and bolts to go through these two holes. The primitive tool that I talked about earlier has a Phillips driver on one side and a flathead driver on the other side. This is a rather large driver to go with these uh, screws. So I think I am going to go get a set of smaller screwdrivers so that I may put this together a bit more gently. This is a much more acceptable size screwdriver. <laughs> Uh, the focus is not going. Okay, uh, much more acceptable size screwdriver for these bolts. The nuts on these come off quite easily, which is nice. Um, it looks like they're stainless steel screws. It's hard to tell, but they look a little bit more stainlessy than <clears throat> the usual cheap screws that you find in many, many kits. So if they are, kudos. That's a uh, bit of improvement. Um, yeah, getting these wires is a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, but they go in quite... Well, that's interesting. Hmm. I do believe maybe those are not supposed to come off. I'm going to check something. Okay, these slots here are very important along with this slot. Uh, they correspond to these bumps in the frame for this and it allows access to the four pin connector for the ultrasonic side. So, it looks like what we want to do is make sure that this is firmly seated in place before we start dealing with the screws. That feels much better. And try and get that screw in. There we go. Get that one in, and we'll put in the bolts from the other side. Boy, that there's not a lot of space there on these four pins. That is uh, remarkably close. Although, I suppose they are flexible enough that when the, the connectors go on, they will have a little bit of force pushing against them to keep them captured. This is where this handy little uh, nut tool comes in. Thank you, Piper. The dogs are being healthy once again, as always. I don't know if this is the right size or not, but it seems to be uh, working well. I'm not tightening these down super tight. It's just enough to keep this mounted and stable. Um, 
and looking at it, it definitely twists this piece back that way. I wonder if that's intentional or if it is uh, just a bit of engineering fluff. I guess we will find out. It feels wrong. It seems like it might be a, a, a tolerance issue, but I digress. Let's move on to the next part. All right, the next part is fairly easy. It is attaching the wheels. However, the instructions say that I'm supposed to tighten these down with screws. Unfortunately, there is no hole for the screws to pass through. Ah, uh, and these don't come apart. This is a one piece hub. So I guess we're going to just press fit them on. <laughs> I am not paying enough attention to the dogs. Well, these are a very tight fit. Um, oh, and there's a bolt. Where did that come from? <laughs> okay, I am not seeing a place where that bolt should come from, so I'm going to put it over here and think that it maybe fell out of this bag. And in fact, I'll just put it back in this bag. And I will try and press these on these motor shafts. So I'm pressing against this side and trying to press these on from the other side. Ah, getting them aligned. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I think those probably don't need screws to hold them on. They are pretty, uh, a pretty tight fit. Ta-da! The wheels are on. I went back and loosened these up a little bit and pushed this through farther. And you can see this definitely has... If I can get some light on that. Uh, this definitely is not a good fit. These pins are very, very close to that edge. Uh, see if you can see them there. That is way closer to that edge than they should be. The slot is too far forward on this board. Uh, I would guess that this is a version one. <laughs> it's an early version of this kit. Uh, but then let us Tighten these back down again. And the next step is to add the Raspberry Pi. I happen to have one here that is brand new. Uh, this is actually quite a nice one. This is Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with the four, was it four gig of RAM? Yeah, four gig of RAM. And uh, this is this is kind of the top the top shelf one. I got this because I want to do some experimentation, but uh, I'm going to put it in the car for now. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the heat sinks on. So that this just, I'm going to skip that for now because that really doesn't have much to do with the kit. And there we go. That's the heat sinks installed. Uh, the Pi goes on this direction and it looks like it uses these four holes. And this goes on with the standoffs 
and these are nylon. They're bolted to the other side with what the user manual says is for nylon nuts. However, they are not nylon, they are steel. So, and go ahead and put them in. And incidentally, yes, this is the correct size for these uh, little M2.5 nuts. which is very awkward to turn, so it's best to use that to hold the nut while you turn the uh, turn the stand off. Again, don't tighten these too much. They are nylon, uh, and they will strip. All they need to be is on tight enough to hold in place while the thing is running. Now eventually you may have to tighten them. That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, as this gets used, things are going to vibrate and uh, they're going to change and maybe loosen up a little bit. So you probably want to go through and make sure that things are still tight. Uh, depending on how this goes, I will probably replace this Raspberry Pi with another one that is less uh, less stellar in its um, complete. You know, I don't need a four four gig Raspberry Pi to be running this little car. Okay, so now the Pi mounts to the nylon spacers like so. Make sure those are firmly attached. And then we have the motor board. This is uh, the side that goes down onto the headers of the Raspberry Pi. Oh. And that is yeah, a little difficulty in the like in the shipping or packaging. There was a little bit of dinging around. Make sure those are correctly set up. And there we go. Push those on to get a decent mount. Make sure that they are all the way down. And then we use these. We use these. These are all M2.5 screws. And yes, indeed, it is these. Uh, the shiny screws, not the black ones, these are the correct size to go into the nylon standoffs. Don't try it with the big ones because they don't work. Uh, there we have the Raspberry Pi and the motor control unit mounted in the way that it is supposed to be, at least according to the instructions. Uh, again, you can see that there is some, I don't know, where are you? There's some uh, awkwardness to the spacing on here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think these nylon standoffs are uh, perhaps not consistent among themselves. But, uh, you know, rather than trying to take them and match them, I'm going to go with this. It's just a little, yeah, little shoddy. Not really super happy with it. So I had a little problem with the uh, SD card. As I was transferring files, it uh, ended up getting corrupted, and I lost a few, lost a few takes. 
and uh, most notably is the one where I discovered that the battery pack that powers the entire thing just clean missing wasn't even in the package uh, overall I was looking at how to assemble this thing I was trying to put the camera together it was it was not in the manual uh, the instructions in the manual were completely different um, it, I, I spent 20 minutes trying to figure out how to put the camera together finally figured it out but when the battery was missing it's like okay I'm dead in the water we're stopping at this point there is no reason to continue so um, I've taken it apart and put it back in the packaging I've contacted labists um, I want to try and get a refund because you know as much as a replacement would kind of be fun the quality of this thing is just so shoddy at this point it, it's it's not ready for prime time um, I guess I, I don't know what else to tell you uh, I'm disappointed I hope that they can try and get an, another round together but you know this thing is for sale on their website it's for sale on Amazon uh, my recommendation is don't buy it at this point wait until they fix the issues so all right until next time see you guys